first of all, let's greet our audience. And I would like to remind uh, that today we have a mini interview, a mini interview with Lindsay Campbell, uh, founder and managing director at Better Work Ventures, author of this Better Work book. Lindsay is a two times tech founder, public speaker, and a venture capitalist. And um, today's interview is featured in the framework of our series of episodes, Seeds of Success, uh, with prominent entrepreneurs, public figures, and successful people, uh, hosted by Studio Hub, the largest network of startup studios worldwide. Mm -hmm. Hi, Lindsay. <laughs> Hi, good to see you. Good to As see always. you. Yeah, likewise. Uh, thank you for your precious time to be our guest. Uh, not only you are an emerging entrepreneur star and a former media and entertainment starlight in your hometown Pittsburgh, but you're also um, a mom uh, and my personal, <laughs> let's say, idol <laughs> of a female entrepreneur. So we really appreciate your time shared Thank with us. Thank you. Of course. I'm always happy to share. So, um, Lindsay, I have to say that the last time that we spoke, uh, you gave me inspiration and motivation, as I mentioned, <laughs> for at least another week, at least uh, I thought so, but it's lasted a bit longer. <laughs> Your passion and encouraging mood were on my mind while I was planning the future activities. And the following week, right after our conversation, we had a knowledge sharing session uh, with um, great women in venture building, and we touched upon the topics of obstacles and opportunities as being a female in an entrepreneurship and the importance or taking about bringing diversity of any type into our industry but we will we will speak about this um a bit a bit further and uh, now i want to ask something else um actually about the seeds of your success it's, it's the title of our today's speech um usually any success and i consider you a very successful individual a woman and a professional has a story behind so me and the audience as well i believe would be interested to know where your story started to end up in the middle of this beautiful road where you're now um, was it a planned journey or why did you choose to be an entrepreneur? Yeah, so honestly, I had no idea what an entrepreneur was growing up. Um, as you mentioned, I'm from Pittsburgh. I grew up here, a very middle class, blue collar upbringing. Um, even through college, I didn't really know what an entrepreneur was. So for me, you know, being a founder was never an option I actually considered, mostly because I didn't know it was a possibility. Um, I basically landed here by following my passions, um, focusing on doing work that made me happy, made me proud, um, work that allowed me to continue to learn um, as I matured in my career. So I actually started in the entertainment industry. Um, my first job was at the Rosie O'Donnell Show in New York City, where I worked in the music department. Um, I was always, I always had a love for the entertainment industry moved from New York out to Los Angeles, where I was a music publicist, worked um, on David Bowie's tour press, which was um, still to this day a, a highlight of my career. And then after spending a bunch of time in Los Angeles, I came back to Pittsburgh and was doing contract work with the media here. I was asked to fill in for the web producer for a, tele a news television station here. I had no idea when they asked me, I was like, yeah, sure, I'll do that. I had no idea what it meant. So I basically walked into the news station, taught myself basic HTML so I could update the website, and immediately fell in love with the internet. So this was probably 2005, 2006. And I'd come from a very traditional marketing and PR background. And when I started doing this work, I realized, wow, the reach, the reach when you're online is so much greater than, you know, this kind of traditional path I'd been following. So it was during that time that I decided that I wanted to go and work for a, a startup, for a tech company. And it was at that tech company where I met my co-founder for my first startup. So, yeah, I mean, I just was doing work that I loved and fell into a role where I met the right person. We had an idea and decided to make it happen. I also think, too, I'm a big believer in um, you have to see it to be it. And as a woman in tech... This is something I'm very passionate about, but it wasn't until I got to that startup um, that I realized this was possible. I was watching these guys in Germany, build, the company was called Spreadshirt, raise money and, and build the team. And I was like, wait, if they can do it, why can't I do it? Um, so again, once I saw it, I realized it was, it was a, an opportunity and there was potential there. 
Thank you so much, Lindsay, for sharing this unique experience. And I'm just uh, surprised, but at the same time, uh, not so surprised to hear the word passion, which brought you to where you are now, which is success, I would say. And um, I haven't, it's not the first time that, that I have actually heard this. So passion, courage, and knowing what you love and you, what you want to do and the impact that you want to bring. So yeah, I totally get it. Um, whereas for, okay, being an entrepreneur basically brought you here, but now you're kind of building a new thing uh, for yourself. Um, it's, it's a bit also new for the world in terms of entrepreneurship model, so the startup studio model. Mm -hmm. And we have talked with you earlier about launching the studio and you told me so many insightful reasonings, which you also reflected in your recent article, why a startup studio. And um, I, I suggest we leave a deeper and broader conversation for another extended event a session. But can you briefly share why you decided to found a startup studio in this uh, way in the first place? Uh, because you could uh, continue being a serial entrepreneur and making profitable exits, right? And not putting yeah. your head and heart into this big responsibility of raising a venture fund to support the activities. Yeah, this is another example of following my passion and being willing to say yes and take some risks. So started my first company in 2006, 2007 um, with a co-founder, grew that, sold it in 2017, started a, or yeah, started a second company around 2017. And I went through the Techstars Mobility Program in Detroit with my second startup, which was called Lane Spotter. Um, over the course of the two years I was building it, I had 60,000 active users. I was building great partnerships all over the country to continue to grow and expand. And even after all of that, I had to shut down the company after one bad technical hire. And I was absolutely devastated. And, you know, when I look back on that experience, doing it as a female solo founder was so much harder than I thought it was going to be. So after I kind of recovered from that, I decided that I wanted to spend a lot of my time doing contract and consulting work with other early stage tech companies. I felt like at that po this point in my career, you know, having been in it for 15 years, that I had so much to offer. And I was at a place in my career, too, where I wanted to see other people be successful. I wanted people to avoid some of the mistakes that I had made over the course of my journey um, to help them be successful. So I did that. And what I noticed was I started seeing the same problems in every company that I became embedded in. A lot of the same really early stage problems. So in the meantime, um, my former managing director from Techstars, Ted Serbinsky, reached out and he asked if I wanted to raise a small venture fund to make pre-seed investments across the Midwest. I legitimately never thought I would be sitting on the other side of the table. Being a VC was not even on my radar. But again, I sat back and I thought to myself, you know, we need more representation on this side of the table. We need more women and minorities making investment decisions. So I looked at it, I said, you know what, this could be a great learning experience. Um, I know for me, when I was a founder, all I ever wanted was somebody sitting across the table from me who looked like me. So I thought maybe I can be that person. Um, started making these early stage investments, really liked it. But I felt like I wasn't as close to the founders and as close to the companies that we were investing in as I wanted to be. On top of that, um, I was introduced to High Alpha, which is one of the biggest and best startup studios in the world. And I joined them for a project. And after going through their process, I kind of sat back and I was like, wow, that's a really interesting way to build a startup. And I realized what it would do is it married my desire to help as many founders as possible with my love of building. Because I'm a builder at heart. I will always be a builder at heart. I'm not somebody who can just write checks. I want to I wanna get my hands dirty. So it was really through this experience of having a couple of startups of my own, making these initial pre-seed investments, and then seeing the actual fundamentals of a startup studio firsthand that really got me to sit back and say, you know what, this is what I want to do. This is going to be the last thing I do in my career. This is what I want the legacy to be. Um, so I just started, decided to start down the path and, and make it a reality. That looks beautiful also because you basically covered and tried to highlight the beautiful parts because you are such. 
I, I would I would like to go back to this small uh, hint that you gave it about the difficulty about uh, the difficulty of being a solo uh, female entrepreneur. I mean, being a female venture builder is difficult. <laughs> Leading a venture studio is difficult. Playing two roles simultaneously might be quite challenging. But uh, we believe uh, that. I mean, people in entrepreneurship innovation, we believe that in every challenge, there is an opportunity. Can you speak about those challenges and opportunities? And also, could you focus a bit on the diversity part because you as a female are bringing diversity. And is there any type of other diversity that is needed in a studio, in your studio, which is basically based in Pittsburgh. So it's not, we would say not quite multinational place, right? But if there mm -hmm. is a diversity why and how do you imagine this yeah i mean being a woman or minority in the venture space is always going to be harder than average um at this point in my career it's interesting i feel like i'm used to it i've mastered the ability to overcome hurdles is kind of one of the ways i look at it um i think also after 15 years in this in this industry um hearing the word no becomes much less painful as you continue to hear it over and over again um, that said, I don't want every woman and minority after me to have to jump over those same hurdles. Um, and we're really kind of building this into the thesis of the studio. So when it comes to um, diversity, it's really baked into the thesis. So Better Work Ventures um, will be working with overlooked founders to build community-driven startups. And when I talk about overlooked founders, um, this means a lot of things to us. So for us, you know, women, minority, solo founder, um, non-coastal. So while we are based in Pittsburgh, we are going to be working with founders um, across the United States, likely focused on the Midwest, since that's where a lot of my relationships exist. Um, and then this aspect of community and, and startup building, you know, we aren't going to start with ideas in our studio. We're going to start with communities and we want to tackle the problems that exist within communities and working with a diverse group of founders. We're going to find so many interesting problems to solve because these people are already embedded in their communities. And there's no better way to, I think, build a startup than find diverse people who are experiencing problems within their community to do that. So that's how we're gonna identify it. And, you know, I really hope that, you know, over the course of our years, we can take a step back at the end of this and, and really look at our portfolio and say, wow, like we, um, we really tackled some really interesting problems in a lot of different spaces with a lot of different types of people. And I want to give those people an opportunity, you know, and I look back and with my second startup, Lane Spotter, if I would have known the studio model was an option, I absolutely would have done it. Um, and I think it's one of the things that's kind of interesting for um, repeat founders as well is once we've done it, we don't necessarily want to go back and have to do all the stuff that we had to do in the beginning. We've already felt the pain. So if we can, as a studio, alleviate, alleviate that pain from minority and solo founders, um, we can definitely help make their chances of success much, much greater. Well, Lindsay, I have to say you're doing something amazing. And uh, of course, you're not unique in, in doing uh, building a startup studio, but you're unique in your approach is the way that you see it. And I can't wait to see your developments. So basically, just to reflect, you're building a community, then building a platform, then giving this platform to the community so they can build things. Yeah. And so, you know, I saw this on Twitter the other day. Somebody had posted, it was a founder, a Black founder, who said, um, if we only receive 2% of VC funding, should we even be chasing it? And this is something I think about a lot. So, you know, our studio is only going to be able to build three startups a year. You know, that's kind of how we're how we're looking at this. That being said, the community that we want to wrap around it. So we're launching our own community to support overlooked founders is let's give them a place to come share their experiences and help them figure out ways to be successful that might not include VC funding. So you know, there's definitely going to be an educational aspect of this along with the building. And again, like I said, we'll only be able to, to work with three founders a year to build their startup, but that doesn't mean we can't help other people be successful in their building. 
right a good points especially on the education and i think we all here have to uh, strive to bring in no, new knowledge more knowledge <laughs> old knowledge and then to share it across the ecosystem across the the people that want to do things want to build things and want to build the beautiful things and build it beautifully <laughs> absolutely very grateful to you lindsay uh, and once again Thank you for your time. And I hope today's conversation will be as inspiring and encouraging to all current and future founders out there as it was for me. And I invite each and everyone to follow our channel for more information and events on venture building. Thank you.